This is an example of LD lead implantation uh, in a patient with a persistent left SDC. And it's always best to approach those patients from the right side, even if you have to give up your pocket on the left side, because the anatomy is much more suitable for implanting from the right side. So here we've cannulated the coronary sinus with a nine French internal diameter Morley sheath. Remember the dia outside diameter is 3.7 millimeters and so you can imagine just how large uh, the coronary sinus is. So here's the outline of the medial aspect of the coronary sinus and then here's the outline of the uh, ventricular side of the coronary sinus. And above this point uh, where I have a line here, uh, above that uh, is the uh, what would have would it be the vein of Marshall if it involuted in this case the blood flow from the left side of the body and head is coming down into the coronary sinus and entering the coronary sinus uh, at this point so everything below this point is enlarged because of the increased blood flow everything above the entry point um, is normal size. So you can see from here on uh, is normal size. And technically, this juncture here um, is from here down is uh, defined as the coronary sinus, and from here up is defined uh, as the great cardiac vein. And so we've been able to uh, direct our catheter lateral and avoid going up into the left subclavian uh, and thus identified the great cardiac vein, injected the great cardiac vein with contrast, uh, and now we see with retrograde filling down the anterior and ventricular vein collaterals to a lateral wall target branch, uh, which then empties into the coronary sinus here. So it's by injecting, vigorously injecting the great cardiac vein um, anterior and ventricular vein selectively uh, with contrast we're able to identify the lateral wall target vein uh, rather than uh, using the balloon. Uh, the rest of the case uh, was, was interesting. You'll notice that here we, the wire is actually entering this branch through the collaterals. Um, we attempted uh, to engage the branch uh, and uh, implant in sort of the traditional fashion, uh, but that was unstable. So we went back up into the anterior ventricular vein um, and placed the wire down here through the collaterals and then back up into the uh, coronary sinus uh, and then using, uh, and then snared the wire here um, uh, and then placed the microcatheter through the collaterals, uh, brought the wire back up, and in, in, were implanting the lead using the antidromic snare technique. So this is the microcatheter through which uh, we advanced the wire, and now we're able to uh, implant using the antidromic snare technique fairly easily. So that's uh, LD lead implantation in a patient with a persistent left SDC. The important points are, number one, always implant these patients from the right side. Uh, even if you're successful from the left side, the leads are unstable. Number two is that if you can stay above, if you can direct the catheter uh, so that it doesn't go up into this, up into the left subclavian and goes out into the great cardiac vein, you'll be in a position where the great cardiac vein is of normal size and you can either uh, put a catheter down the anterior and ventricular vein and select injectively, selectively inject, or you can even put a balloon up into the anterior, into the great cardiac vein because it's normal size. Uh, anything below that, which would be the, the, the vein of Marshall entry point, is gonna be extremely large and hard to deal with. Uh, another location that you can look uh, to selectively cannulate would be at the os of the coronary sinus, 
again using a support wire technique uh, this is easy to do and you can locate the, the middle cardiac vein and selectively inject that so I hope this helps for your patients with persistent left SVC.